Hello, welcome to Cycle, a program focused on Mongolian business and economy. My name is Batsir Namsher. The external debts of Mongolia, including public and private sectors' debts, reached 29.7 billion US dollars as of June 2019. The government debts stood at 7.2 billion, the central bank's debts at 2 billion, commercial bank's debts totaled 2.3 billion US dollars, and the remaining debts belong to public and private sectors. One third of the total external debts of Mongolia is owned by foreign invested companies. There is no large amount of payment for foreign debts due before 2021. However, between 2022 and 2024, the government of Mongolia is scheduled to make payments of 2.9 billion US dollars. Mongolian government will repay 600 million US dollars of Mazalai bond in 2021. 1 billion US dollars of Chinggis bond in 2022, 800 million US dollars of Gerek bond in 2023, and 500 million US dollars of Gorldaya bond in 2024. Mongolia's economic growth is expected to moderate but remains solid in 2019 and 2020 as the country moves to a more sustainable growth path. In its Asian Development Outlook 2019 update, the Asian Development Bank projects Mongolia's economic growth at 6.7% in 2019 and 6.1% in 2020 from the 7.2% growth rate recorded in 2018. Growth in the first half of 2019 was boosted by strong domestic demand and expanding mining and construction sectors. The remainder of the year will see growth easing due to lower demand in the People's Republic of China and import growth fueled by domestic demand, according to the report. What are the highlights uh, from uh, the Outlook update? Mm. Are there any differences between the Outlook you released in April, ADB released in April and today's update? Yeah, so there's there's a number of differences. So we've kept the growth forecast for 2019 as the same, so we're still forecasting 6.7%. But for next year, we're expecting a slight moderation. So we've changed the forecast from 6.3% to 6.1%. Um, for inflation, we've made no changes. So we're still forecasting 8.5% for this year and 7.5% for next year. And then lastly, on the current account, we are forecasting the current account to uh, widen slightly in both years from our April forecast. So it's still much narrower this year because of the export performance at the start of the year. But next year, we expect to see it widening a little bit, a little bit more than we had originally expected. Uh, what should Mongolian policymakers do uh, to maintain this continued growth? So I think there's a number of things uh, they can do. I think the first thing I'd say is um, they need to continue focusing on strong macroeconomic management. Mm -hmm. So some of the work that they've done, particularly on the fiscal side in the last few years, continuing that and making sure that that's something that becomes a standard part of Mongolian policy going forward, going forward beyond the election. They need to continue working on structural reforms, particularly um, in the banking sector, and ensuring that Mongolia has got a thriving banking sector that's able to uh, provide an appropriate amount of credit um, in a sensible and, 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 and solid way. I think the, the other things I'd say is, is it needs to continue positioning itself as a, an, an investment environment that is friendly, where it's easy to do business, and I think they need to keep on working on that. And finally, I would say that being very careful about what they do about big infrastructure projects. So we know there's a lot of focus on big infrastructure projects, making sure that these the right ones are chosen and that these are done really well. And if those two factors can combine, then those big projects could have uh, a very positive impact um, on Mongolian growth going forward. Uh, what would you say 
about the risks and challenges Mongolian economy uh, might face in the near future? Sure. So I think, I think I would look at two sort of sides. I'd say I'd obviously look domestically um, first. And domestically, I suppose, is where Mongolian policymakers have more control. Um, and, and I would say one is making sure that um, they, they do focus on the banking sector and they, they do try and keep on pushing through some of the, the remaining challenges in that sector. The second thing I'd say is really making sure that um, we see a continuation of the good uh, fiscal management policy that we've seen. Those two things, um, I think the second is less of a risk because I think Mongolia has learnt a lot and done a lot, uh, but it's certainly something I'd like to see. On the external side, and this is where Mongolia obviously um, has less influence to change things, but we're all aware of, of, of the trade conflict going on between um, the United States and the People's Republic of China. That is going to have an impact on the People's Republic of China. We're already seeing it moderating a little bit, but it's also potentially going to have an impact on global demand. And if it has an impact on global demand, then there's a possible uh, follow-through impact on commodity prices. And if there's an impact on commodity prices, of course, Mongolia is going to feel that. So I think, I think being mindful of those two things. Now, what, what can Mongolia do about that? One, it can continue to, to build up its buffers, which is basically good macroeconomic management. And two, it can keep on trying to do what it's been doing, so making sure that it really focuses on maintaining its good, its current trade relationships in as healthy a position as possible, and also continuing to try and build others. Economic growth was faster than expected in the first half of 2019, said ADB's country director for Mongolia, Yolanda fernandez Laman. Mongolia's growth prospects continue to be positive going into 2019 and 2020, although slowing growth in the People's Republic of China will have an impact on Mongolia's export sector. Average inflation rose by 8.1% year-on-year in June and will average 8.5% in 2019 due to rising domestic demand and higher food prices. These effects will be less pronounced in 2020, allowing inflation to ease to 7.5%. The current account deficit narrowed to 10.2% in the first half of 2019, and import demand will mean that it will widen further in 2020. The budget recorded a surplus of 4.7% of gross domestic product in the first half of 2019, and credit expansion eased with the growth of newly issued loans remaining moderate at 5% in the first six months. Non-performing loans climbed to 10.6% of total outstanding loans. Mongolia remains vulnerable to external shocks, particularly in the mineral price fluctuations or the impact of low growth in the People's Republic of China. Domestically, potential disruption to the finalization of bank recapitalization program as agreed under the International Monetary Fund program, poses risks. On September 27th, Minister of Finance Kurun Potter delivered a media presentation on bills on state budgets of Mongolia for 2020, which have been submitted to the Parliament for discussion. Total budget revenue for next year is estimated at 12.9 billion Mongolian Tugruks and total expenditure at 13.8 billion MNT. However, the finance minister Kurt Butter noted that the state budget is likely to show profitability from 2023 and the government is taking measures to reduce budget deficit gradually so that business entities and citizens are not affected. The economic growth for the next year is projected at 7-8% and inflation rate to remain the same as this year at around 8%. Some key highlights from the projected state budget for 2020. Tax refunds to be issued every quarter. No domestic or foreign bonds to be issued in order to alleviate budget deficit. In terms of mining commodities, a total of 42 million tons of coal to be sold. In total of 1,225,000 tons of copper concentrate to be sold. 
160 billion Mongolian Tugruks for salaries is allocated to the budget for coordination of salary and inflation rate. 137 billion Mongolian Tugruks for air pollution reduction. Minerals and Mining Business Summit Discover Mongolia 2019 took place on September 27th and 28th in Ulaanbaatar. During the keynote session, why invest Mongolia's resource sector? Ethnos Mongolia CEO Kang Hu put forward offers to domestic and foreign investors on cooperation in an area of brown coal exploration and development. Moreover, he said, that Irtnus Mongol subsidiary Irtnusaft Resource is currently developing a gold refinery and copper smelting project with investors, as the country has an estimated reserve of copper that's ready for processing at around 3 to 4 million tons. Deputy Director of Irtnus Tauntla joined the company. Zocht Bayer gave update on the company's latest activities, which include zoom buying railway development projects, IPO of the Irtnus Tauntla mining on international stock exchange, and a project to build copper concentration plant with a capacity of 8 to 9 million tons. Throughout the nine years of operation, the company's total sales of coal reached 55.8 million tons and exploration is around 58 million tons, 13 million tons of which are explored this year. Within the framework of the government's Open Door Days, Ministry of Mining and Heavy Industry organized an Open Door Day event on September 25th. More than 40 entities working in the mining industry, which counts for 86% exports of Mongolia and one-fourth of the country's total budget revenue, are taking part to introduce their activities. Representatives from the Ministry of Mining and Heavy Industry, Mineral Resources and Petroleum Authority and Mining Academic Research Instructions are participating in this event, as well as almost all operating companies' representatives in the mining sector, namely Bagnor, Shivewa, Sharingol, Irtnus Mongol, etc. You can get a lot of information about the mining sector during these open days. At the open day event, CEO of Ertens Town Dolga joined the company, Kang Hui gave a report on the subsidiary companies of Ertens Town Dolga. The company now owns 66% of the Town Dolga Railway, LSC, a special purpose entity by a government resolution of this year. He noted that the company now requires 690 million US dollars to complete a railway project. Furthermore, the Irtnus Tauntla is financing a railway construction project of Tauntla Zoom buying with 750 billion Mongolian Tugruks by purchasing securities of the Mongolian Railways Company. Another subsidiary company, the Irtnus Tauntla owns Irtnus Tauntla Mining, whose 30% stake is offered to foreign investors on a stock exchange according to CEO Kang Hoik. I have been visiting the open days of government since last week. As a student, it's really hard to get this kind of information and you would have to spend a lot of time. I'm glad that I got all the information about government activities in a short time and from one central place. During the visit of Minister of Mining and Heavy Industry Sumia Bazar to Japan, Mongolian Mining Investment Forum was held and Mongolia's investment climate, opportunities and government policies in mining sector were introduced to over 300 business delegation. Mongolia's mining projects started being registered in a stock exchange. An exploration company that listed on Toronto Stock Exchange has enlisted in Mongolian Stock Exchange in 2018. I am underlining that this process has been intensifying and the companies are submitting their requests of double registration. Preparing works are being done since the Mongolian parliament resolved to sell up to 30% of the total shares of Irtnus Tauntal Joint Stock Company at foreign and domestic stock exchanges.
The government set a goal to increase volume and quality of coal export of Mongolia in a way of financing projects and programs in railroad, energy, outer road and coal preparation plants and supplying coking coal to Northeast Asian countries through Chinese and Russian territories. Cooperation proposals in these directions are open to investors. It is calculated that financing of 20.4 billion US dollars is required in 149 development projects of Mongolia. Therefore, mutually beneficial cooperation and joint efforts of businessmen and investors are crucial for us, said the minister. Trade turnover between Mongolia and Japan reached 600 million US dollars. The Japanese side has made huge investment in energy sector of Mongolia in the past. Now there is possibility for producing high quality final products with the help of Japan technologies and run mutually beneficial cooperation. Director of Ibn's Mongol LLC, Kanku highlighted. The American Chamber of Commerce in Mongolia held its September monthly meeting organizing a panel discussion on women business leaders as catalysts of change. Gender disparities in Mongolia are clearly evident in Mongolia's business sector, where women comprise only 30% of mid-level managers and only 15% of higher-level positions. Well, that's all for the program. Thanks for being with me. See you next time.